Hi there, my name is Franz Sands and this is MyBoxingCoach.com. Um, today I'm going to explain to you a great way to enhance power and this is by squaring your stance. Now, as with everything else in life, if you're going to enhance something, it usually means there's a trade-off. It usually means that you're sacrificing something else. And the same is true of low maximizing power when coming to use particularly hooks and uppercuts. So let's talk very briefly about the stance. So the conventional stance that I would coach that one of my boxers would use the majority of the time is the conventional sort of uh, side on stance where you've got a line going from the toe on my front foot to the heel on my back foot on the balls of the feet, the hands are nice and high, arms tucked in, chin down, everything nice and relaxed. This stance is geared towards a balance of mobility, power and reach. So I can, at this, with the stance in this configuration, I'm, I'm in the best possible position to be able to make the most of the ring, to quickly move out, quickly move in, it lends itself well to explosive footwork. Now, if I all of a sudden take the stance out there, you can see that the gap in between my feet has widened significantly from there, where you couldn't, you couldn't roll a ball between my feet without it hitting either the front foot or the rear foot, to there, where you could roll more or less a medicine ball through my feet. Now, this is the thing. At, this should only be done at close mid-range. At long range, if I square my stance up like that, I'm losing both mobility, as we've discussed, but I'm also reducing the shot length and I'm reducing the power on the straight punches. This is geared towards developing power for the hooks and uppercuts. But most importantly, I am sacrificing mobility. Now, I, I hold mobility above pretty much everything else. I think you, especially in amateur boxing, you have to absolutely be 100% mobile. I think to understand boxing, to get the very most out of it, even if you're, you're working out for fitness, being highly mobile um, really, really helps. So this is not a long range stance. Conventional, squared for short and mid range. Given that you're at short and mid range, whereas this stance, if we're at long range or edge of range, we can relax our arms a little. When you're in the square stance, these arms have to be up very high. For the simple reason you're using this a close to mid range. Having your hands down here at that range is kamikaze stuff. You're going to end up getting, getting chinned. Okay, so make sure that the hands stay nice and high under the cover of a guard. Now, something, a little bit of a variation here as well. Whilst this is a square stance in orthodox, what really helps is if you're able to square the stance in southpaw as well. So what we're talking about here, we're operating a close range and I'm going to be switching from one stance to another. Okay, hands are nice and high. So I may, from the square stance, I may whack a body shot in, whack an uppercut in, come back round, bring myself into the, um, the southpaw stance. The really, really key things when switching that stance like that at close range is I need to be comfortable using my back hand in a lead hand type way and using my lead hand in a back hand type way. So you, you're driving the rotation and all of the drive. So if I'm there, one, two, three, all of a sudden now my lead hand has become my back hand and I have to be comfortable with the rotation 
involved in throwing those type of shots. So we're there. Whenever you do that switch, not only do we do it with the cover high, it's always worth doing it behind punching. So make the change. So you might go one, two, switch that stance. So as, you, as you've landed that uppercut, that rear foot has come forward and you've switched configuration. You're still in a square stance. You are still delivering high power shots. You are still covering up well. I suppose a good way to demonstrate this now is I'll do a round on the bag. So I've, I've had my shot of ephedrine. Medical team are on standby with oxygen. I'll just show you a quick round on the bags where I try and develop those, those, that punching ability, sacrificing mobility for power. I will at the first start part of the round show you my conventional stance where I'm moving in and out and I'm looking to deliver, uh, go for mobility over power. Something I should add, when we're at close range, so fighters who did this type of thing, Tyson was someone who regularly fought out of that sort of square stance. Marvin Hagler was another fighter who really switched effort, 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 effortlessly, easy for me to say, at close and mid-range. So he wouldn't even realise that he was changing stance. But again, square stance, but changing to um, South Pole and Orthodox. So yeah, I'll show you the round where the first part of the round I'll be mobile and then I'll switch in and I'll go for um, square and power based stuff. Okay, have a little look at this. So there you go. Now, the thing I love about this, it's great fun. Let's put competition to one side, because I know lots of people I coach online are all about the fitness and the self-defense and all that kind of stuff. It's so much fun when you can just switch into that type of boxing where you're opening up the stance and you're delivering real power with either hand, treating each hand as a lead hand and a back hand and alternating that. Um, 
whenever if I'm working with a boxer and they're tired, I always advise you straight shots when you're tired. Okay, straight shots are the most efficient punches that you throw. Fastest way from A to B, most efficient way from A to B is a straight line. So when you're tired, go with straight shots. So it stands to reason if you're in this for fitness and strength and power and endurance, it stands to reason when you're tired and out, square the stance and go for power because that will push you way beyond your sort of um, energy levels and your, your endurance limits. You can really plant those feet, vary the stance and let the power go. So, I mentioned quickly, I just want to show you a very quick drill. I mentioned that thing about changing from stance from South Pole to Orthodox. I just want to show you very quickly um, that principle of um, switching the stance and how you can do that, treating the lead hand as a backhand and a backhand as a lead hand. So in shadow boxing or during a drill, you do a quite simple process. Jab forward, out to the side. As soon as that foot lands, hook round, pivot back. Uppercut into the body, so now I'm in a south paw stance. Jab out to the side, uppercut. Jab. Okay, switching stance and making the feet drive with the punches as you go. I think I'll leave it there. So square the stance deliver lots of power i hope you've enjoyed that subscribe and download the beginner boxer toolkit gives you lots of structured advice helps build your confidence gives you knowledge that you set up your training sessions my name is Franz Sands. this is my boxing